Hey there everybody, I am the Jimmer, and uh, no, sorry, nah, I'm Beastman, um, and I thought I'd just try and do some basic tutorials to show people basics and a little bit more advanced stuff in from the depths. Um, so the first thing I'm going to look at is buoyancy, because I see stuff on the Reddit and it's sometimes it, it's stupid. So thing you've got to look at here is the buoyancy value that are on blocks. So if you look at wood here, you can see at the very bottom it says block has a relative buoyancy of plus 27.7 and the empty space is 37.5. So we know that wood will float. If we look at heavy armor, it has a buoyancy of minus 158. What will happen? It will sink. But if we got some alloy on there, and it floats. And you'll notice that I the view on so that I can see where the center of mass is, where the center of buoyancy is. Basically you always want the heavier material to be on the bottom and the lighter materials to be at the top. Um, so these people that build superstructures that are coated in heavy armor, this is what's going to happen. top is heavier than your bottom, your boat will turn over and it will sink. If I take that off, oh look, it rises again. Um, things to bear in mind, um, air gaps. So. So what we've done here is we've created a very, very, very basic boat. We can see that it's kind of going underwater. We put an air pump in. And you can see that the air is being pumped in there. What you do need is generally, depending on what you're making, is to um, seal this off. So now we've got a sealed room that is 0% flooded. And this, every square in here, will now provide 37.5 buoyancy. Um, also, things to consider things like your engines look there relative buoyancy of minus 6.9 so when you start building engines and adding in resources like fuel storage these things all start making your boat sink obviously but some people build hulls and then wonder why it suddenly doesn't float oh that's why um, adding lead to the bottom is a good way of keeping your center of mass steady. It keeps the boat steady in the water. Building wide also is good for stability. But the problem with building wide of course is that you have more drag. Um, 
drag in this game is from the front only. So if you look at like this view at the moment, this is uh, drag. But if we put down slopes, you'll notice that down slopes are the best thing for cutting through the water. So if I kept this shape, which obviously nobody would, um, it would go really slow through the water, but if I was to put slopes on, that would make it go quicker. But obviously the more slopes I've got at the front there, I can even do like this. I think, no, I can't. Um, it would provide more and more and more water cutting ability, at which point um, uh, it would go faster through the water. So yeah, really basic. Um, the other thing is you can use underwater now, which wasn't so viable before, is you can use helium underwater. But the problem with helium, uh, is that it leaks out at twice the speed if there is a leak, but it does provide more more buoyancy. That's nearly flying. <laughs> but yeah, so you could also use helium pumps underwater as well as air pumps. But I think generally you're probably better still sticking with uh, air. So here's something else you can do, which is to have up props to provide your float adhesion. Now this is regarded as many as a bit cheaty. So um, forward thrusters are set to be normal thrust back ones set to be reverse, side ones are set to roll left and right on the other side. I've got my AI mainframe with a general purpose altitude terrain and wave and a general purpose roll pit. Now this is more complicated than what I wanted to cover but just showing you anyway. This new pit, so it's relatively new, and the terrain and wave makes sure that your boat always stays over top of waves so sometimes actually better to have props somewhere because then your boat is able to account for waves. So if I crank the waves up, the boat will try its hardest to stay on top of the waves. Um, this doesn't work so well on larger builds because um, Nick has classed anything larger than I think 2000 blocks or volume uh, to be a large build and at which point it randomly selects um, blocks from across the ship. Now if the random selection is all at the front or all at the back or whatever then this can result to a little bit of weirdness but generally this works fine as you can see it's staying on top of the waves. Um, same rules before, so this is my keel at the bottom, weight to keep it down buoyancy stuff on the top to keep it up, um, but generally, I mean, if you're a realism nerd like a lot of people are in the discord then they wouldn't want to do this, but if you're making this for yourself, I would probably recommend having someone it doesn't hurt. Um, these do use power though, so you have to make sure that um, you have enough engine power to power these. Um, you can set how aggressively you want it to try and correct in the PID, which is this value here. Um, and this is how often you want it to check, and this is the amount of time it smooths over, but I'll cover that more in a different short. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful for people. Um, if you liked this, or you know, if you want to 
slag off my voice or anything then feel free to leave a comment or whatever or uh, if you wanted to learn about something in particular let me know and I'll try and cover that next time okay thanks bye